Welcome back. Coming up for you later in the hour, Josh Kurtz with analysis of an intriguing poll in the Maryland Senate race and new efforts to regulate drones. Pilots reporting unwanted interactions with the devices on a growing basis. Keep it here for all of that. Right now, though, let's get straight back to our conversation with Washington Post reporter Mike DeBonis. Where do we think Paul Ryan is as he absorbs and is the subject of so much pressure, not only from within the House GOP caucus, where folks across the spectrum, as we noted a moment ago, are saying, you really bring something unique to the table with John Boehner on his way out. Mm -hmm. We think that you can, to the extent anyone can, right. unite us and, 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 and at least finish out this congressional term. But there's also pressure coming from outside the chamber as well. Mitt Romney, sure. who is Paul Ryan's running mate in 2012, right. on the phone at least uh, one time, where we know from reporting. So give us a feel for, uh, is there any way to know? Uh, we don't know where he's going to end up. What we do know is that he is considering it and he's open to it in a way that he wasn't two weeks ago. Um, the moment uh, when the meeting where John Boehner announces, I'm retiring, uh, he walks out and he says, don't even ask. I'm not interested. I have <laughs> small children. Ask. This is not a job for me. This is a job for an empty nester who has time to uh, run around the country raising money and dealing with the small bore petty requests of every member of the conference and uh, basically you know, giving their life to the job. I don't want to do that. I have my dream job. Leave me alone. Um, and that's what he said for the next two weeks up until the moment that Kevin McCarthy, who everyone thought was the heir apparent, said, I don't want to be speaker. Um, at that point, Brian did put out a statement that said, no, I'm still not interested. But then the drumbeat started. Then the phone calls started. And uh, he went back to Wisconsin last weekend, and he is, you know, people who are close to him, uh, we, Bob Costa and I reported today in the paper, uh, say that he is, he is giving it serious consideration and that he, might, he would be inclined to do it under certain circumstances. Now, the question is whether those circumstances will uh, materialize, and, you know, that's going to be him doing this job on his own terms. It means less travel than uh, members might have become accustomed mm -hmm. to, less fundraising. Some of that could fall to Kevin McCarthy. Right. His, I think his, you know, there, there is a possibility he's going to stand up as soon as tonight and make a pitch that says, listen, if this is the kind of speaker I could be, um, if you want an idea, a person with, who is going to set a vision for our party and for our conference, who is going to put the big ideas forward and set an agenda that's going to take us where we want to go. I'm your guy. If you want a guy who's going to be in your district uh, raising money for you, if you want a guy who's going to uh, cater to every whim mm -hmm. of every uh, corner, ideological corner of the conference, I'm not your guy. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's likely going to set out those terms and people have to decide whether they want him or not. Is, is part of the equation potentially that he brings tax policy, given his passion for that and, and arguably the uh, large need for, mm -hmm. uh, tax, for reform in this area? Is it possible that, um, that some of that would migrate with him to the Speaker's sure, office? I, I think that's a possibility, perhaps even a likelihood. Uh, there's precedent for speakers taking intense uh, interest in certain policy areas, certainly Newt Gingrich as Speaker. Uh, consolidated a lot of the policy making uh, in his uh, in his office. It was it was taken from the committees. Um, so you know th 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 that's not certainly not out of the realm of possibility, and in fact prob might even be in the realm of probability that you know, Paul Ryan would want to retain significant, if not total. Uh, influence over that. Arguably, this group of ultra conservatives, the House Freedom Caucus, caucus drove Boehner out and they kept Kevin McCarthy from doing what everyone thought he would do, mm -hmm. which is to ascend to the post uh, uh, as Boehner's successor. How emboldened do they feel? And are they flexing their muscle now, figuring we're on a roll, let's make it three for three? In yeah. other words, let's get our guy. Sure. Yeah, no, they, they absolutely know that they have power in their unity, that if they, if they move together uh, in a certain direction, you know, they have enough votes to deny uh, a majority to the rest of the Republican conference. Um, and that's where their, their power comes from. Now, if the question is a Speaker Paul Ryan, it's an interesting case because I think there, that, would, that would fracture that unity. I think there are 
uh, a good number of members who are whether of the Freedom Caucus or unaffiliated with it who may not have favored John Boehner or Kevin McCarthy mm -hmm. who would favor a Paul Ryan as the ideas man as the vision guy um, in you know but uh, you know, if Ryan may look at that and say, hey, even if there's a dozen of you guys who are going to be um, not supporting me and are going to be a thorn in my side for, for the next, uh, you know, 16 months plus, I don't want to deal with that. So the question is, how, how large is that rump of, of opposition going to be? to Orion if he decides to move forward with this. Uh, in our remaining moments, let's talk about the testimony that Hillary Clinton is going to give before the House Select Committee on Benghazi. This is going to be one of those big moments of Washington drama. Even though uh, Kevin McCarthy's uh, comments, which I'm sure he wishes had never been uttered, uh, have perhaps framed the larger issue of the Hill probe of the death of the four diplomats in, in a slightly different light. Nonetheless, when, you, when you're talking about the the leader of the Democratic PAC uh, going before a committee that clearly uh, believes that serious mistakes were made. This is all teed up as, as a big, big, as I say, Washington moment. Right. Um, I would say the likelihood that we learn new facts or that uh, uh, new revelations uh, are made about the, the, those incidents in Benghazi are pretty minimal. But uh, what this is going to be about on both sides is trying to create those sort of media-ready TV moments uh, that are going to, you know, be issues in the upcoming presidential campaign for Hillary Clinton. Republicans want to catch her in situations where they can show that she is the, the, the person that they say she is, untrustworthy, um, you know, perhaps even incompetent in the realm of national security. Uh, and Hillary Clinton is going to want to show Republicans being uh, unfairly partisan and basically engaging in a witch, witch hunt to uh, keep her from being president. Uh, and that's what the, the questioning and the, the tenor of, of the, the, the discussion on Thursday is going to be geared to. So don't expect it to uh, solve the Benghazi mysteries, whatever remains at this point. Expect it to be a, really a, a political showdown of the first degree. With opportunity and potential peril for both sides. Both sides will want to seem strong and as though they're talking about issues of, of serious uh, substance and meat uh, without overplaying their hand and, and, and hurting themselves in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think th there's an offensive and defensive characteristic to both sides. And, you know, I think there's there's been a lot of uh, planning that, that has gone into this. There's a lot of strategizing. And uh, it'll be fascinating to watch. Indeed it will. Washington Post reporter uh, Mike DeBonis, he covers the Hill for the paper. Great job as always. We're really delighted to have you here. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Bruce. We'll talk with you again soon. We'll talk Maryland politics next. And our focus this time will be that topsy-turvy race for the Senate seat now held by retiring Barbara Mikulski.